Depression is a huge issue in our community as it is around the world. In the US, one in every 15 people will experience depression over the course of their lifetime. Unfortunately, less than half of these individuals will get treatment. The good news is that we have treatments that work. Both pharmacological and psychological treatments have response rates around 60%. But 60% is not 100%. Many people look at this response rate and think, how can we improve existing treatments? Or how can we develop novel treatments that will improve response rates? Our lab is interested in a complementary approach. How can we determine which treatment is most likely to be optimal for a given individual? 60% is the average treatment effect, in which is hidden a subgroup of people with very positive responses and another subgroup of people with very negative responses. If we can determine what the right treatment is for each person, we can increase response rates and improve outcomes in the existing mental health care framework. But in mental illness, we don't believe any single factor will determine which treatment an individual should get. Many factors combine to influence what the optimal treatment for an individual is. So our approach combines genetic, biological, environmental, cognitive, and interpersonal factors to help make these decisions. But what should a clinician do when some factors indicate one treatment and other factors indicate a second treatment? To account for these situations, we developed the Personalized Advantage Index, a treatment selection method that uses predictive variables to build statistical models that consider all of the available information to predict which treatment is going to be optimal for an individual. We've constructed these models for a variety of different treatment comparisons. Antidepressants versus cognitive therapy for depression, which type of psychotherapy is going to be optimal for an individual, or which individuals need combined treatment with both drugs and therapy, and who can get by on antidepressants alone. We've also constructed these models in anxiety disorders and PTSD, and the next step will be to test these models prospectively, pitting them against other ways of selecting treatment, like clinical judgment or patient preference. In a few weeks, we're going to welcome 60 researchers to the University of Pennsylvania to discuss personalized medicine and mental health. Together, we hope to improve the lives of those struggling with mental illness.